everyone, welcome back to Dragonfly Engineering. So this week we've got an interesting robot automation project that I completed for one of my quick customer jobs. And without further ado, let's check it out. I'll flip the cell phone camera around. All right, here we go. So we've got the red robot in operation. And what it's doing is it is clipping all of these black parts off of the four-way runner. So we'll see here that Green robot, excuse the glare, pulling out this, this four gang part on a mold. These are four identical parts, and then the red robot grabs it from the green robot, and then it brings these parts over to the cutter, which is right here, and then a ram cuts all the parts off. Well, except for sometimes it misses one, unfortunately. Oh, but maybe it broke it off. And then it dumps it into the bucket down there. So let's take a look at this operation again. Maybe I'll zoom or head over to the to the 25 ton molding machine. Okay, so we're over at the 25 ton machine where we've got a new mold, which I'll show you guys how I made this mold in a, pre, in a future episode. But it's these four shroud parts molded in black ABS. And then the green robot is pulling these parts out and then it will hold them in a way that they droop a little bit because it's still warm. The red robot transfers or grabs the parts from the green so that they flip over. And then we are going to load the parts into this cutting fixture, which cuts the parts. And then it tries to knock off extra parts. And unfortunately, it didn't quite cut them all. So I might have to adjust a little bit. How the red robot, which is commissioned for the first time, grabs the bottom of the runner with a sprue and then brings it over to this to this cutting station here, and then places the part over the cutter, and then the air cylinder with the uh, basically the plumbing attachment on the bottom cuts the parts off. And if you see this setup. There is uh, four razor blades that are screwed into a piece of aluminum 20 channel and then kind of a funnel hole in the middle so that the sprue will drop in. So the, the red robot is set up to, to basically drop the center sprue from the mold right into that guy. And here we'll see it happen again. So places the parts, gets out of the way, the, the ram hits. Looks like I need to adjust the plastic ram a little bit. Kind of missing the left blade and then repeat. So we'll zoom back out and then the red robot gets ready for its next grab and the green robot has its next part coming out of the mold and it hands it off, flips it over. Oh, and then green's going to get its next part out of the molding machine and then repeat. Let's check out to see if I need to adjust the ram. Yeah, it's having trouble cutting the left side. I have to figure that out. I can spin the, the plastic part around. Actually, we're getting loose in there too. Right, let's spin it to a different area. See if that helps. As you can see all the parts that are being cut. This is the kind of the back side. I don't have a good way to collect the parts, but this is the left and the right and the front side. And here's the, the parts that we're molding. See if I, that helps at all. No, oh, yeah, the, the thing is way off. Let me fix that. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. So, yeah, the the problem with this aluminum framing, this 80/20 stuff, is it does loosen up and drift around. Let's see how we do here. And we're still off. All right, so we're back. So one disadvantage of using this aluminum structural framing, sometimes called 80/20 or item is that after repeated pounding from your setup, it starts to loosen up and drift around on you. So I had to loosen these bolts and slide this, this piston plate over. Let's see how we do. There we go. So now our, our little PVC uh, pipe adapter is realigned with, with our array of four razor blades. And basically, we're just cutting the parts off. So this is what the, the part array looks like prior to cutting and it happens that the, the gap between the four parts is exactly the width of this 
of this structural framing over here, this guy. So it was really easy to just bolt these razor blades on using some little M3 screws. And then we can cut it off. And then this, you know, this, this, this PVC pipe adapter has a hollow bottom. So that wasn't machine, I just bought it off of the off the rack at Home Depot. Watch this. I have a pressure regulator to adjust the pressure of our piston so we don't overpound and basically break off our razor blades. But I have had to replace some of these razor blades like that. So you can see they do fatigue crack after a while. Uh, this air or this piston ram is something I made in a previous episode. And I did bring this in and bolt it to the table thinking that I could use that. But unfortunately, the, the, the travel isn't enough uh, to clear the height of the, uh, of, the, of the runner or the screw. So I, I had to go with this taller piston and basically just bolt everything in place. Like you can see, I've got a machinist square here. And then I got another random like uh, aluminum framing bracket right there around all these parts. Actually, I better just <laughs> do some house cleaning here. One thing that can happen when you're when you're just running a lot of production like this with robots is is basically the parts you're creating start to pile up and interfere with the robot. So that's one of the more common problems that you have with robot automation is what to deal with, what to do with all of the parts and to make sure they get out of the work area. So yeah, here's the Basically, the third side uh, doesn't have any place to go other than to accumulate on the table. Uh, white and the other white robots are, are taking the day off today. Let's see how it looks from this direction. Screw into the bucket. It had some miscuts. Over here is the temperature controller with a whole bunch of messy wires everywhere. We've got our mold temperature at a, well, 160 is the target, but 180 is where it's at right now. I don't really have a cooling system on uh, per se, but 160 is a was a, a first guess. It's actually I think 180 is probably more apt. And then the B side is, is this guy, which is also 180 degrees, and I had that it's set at 170. But it's actually controlling slightly. You can see the flashing light. And if, if these get a little more out of hand, like 190 or 100, yeah, basically 190 to 200, then I'll turn on the cooling water in the mold. And down there, you can see the copper lines with the cooling, with the cooling water that can go in to cool off this mold if need be on the B side. We're dragging a string, but it doesn't matter in this case. White is taking the day off today. All right, we're good on that. So here's our mold. It's uh, four profiles, and it makes this black ABS shroud part. So you can see that the, there's the A side. And then the B side, and this this part is a little interesting because the back is open. You can see how it's basically a back kind of just open shroud without like a, a shear wall on the back. But that required having a shutoff surface on the back of the mold, which effectively wedges into a steel slider plate on the A side. So you may be able to see some some like steel plates there in the back and then this these surfaces these aluminum surfaces close out on that like so i'm going to show the process of making this mold in the, the future episode but i thought you guys would dig the robot action here and then here's the, the controller itself maybe not a great image with the camera 
then we got our standard gripper array on, on green here, which is used for a few different projects. We'll see how it grabs the part off of the B side, used to grabbing the sprue, and then pulls out and hands the part off to red. And this is, well, let's see, this is half the, so before I reset the counter, we're at 754. We've got 3,000 cycles to go, and the machine is telling me it's going to take 21 hours to finish. So, yeah, we've got a, a ways to go, but the robots are working autonomously, which is not always a good thing. And I'm going to go back next door and continue machining the next mold. And we do have red working finally in production. Uh, so this robot has been sitting idly for about half a year now, but now it is it is earning its keep. Uh, down here I can show you the robot controllers, which are a bit of a mess. So one thing about red is that its IO module uses negative voltage. So where green uses positive voltage, so when it sends a signal, it sends 24 volts positive to other robots and things. But red uh, uses minus 24 volts. So the result is a little bit of a complication in the wiring and effectively I need to flip, I need to say that the ground is actually 24 volts and it's, its ground is really minus 24 volts. So I, I pretty much have to reverse the wires on red for everything. And then when green talks to red, I actually have to use uh, this relay, which basically converts the minus, or the plus 24 volts into minus 24 volts. And I've, here I've got it temporarily hooked up. But this is a, a DC to DC relay. And whenever a robot needs to talk to red, since it's running in negative voltage, I need to convert that minus to plus with this uh, DC to DC relay, which is just a coil inside, which activates with current flow. So the, the magnetic coil doesn't care what direction the, the voltage is. There, you just heard it click. Uh, but it just wants to close the circuit with current to close another one, which is the signal to the robot. That's it. All right, well, so this is gonna be a short one. Well, for us, but these robots are going to run for the next 22 hours. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.